This is Chris Ayer, and you're watching Toasted. Chris, welcome to Amsterdam. Thank you so much. I love it here. Yeah, you've been here many times, right? <laughs> like in the last few years, I started coming a lot, and I just, it's a great place. I've worked on a lot of the new music, and uh, I've been working with the label now here, and it's just great. I love it. Awesome. Because I uh, saw some uh, some of your fans on uh, on your social media. I got like, first time I saw you here was in 2005, a secret gig in uh, some somewhere in the red light district, actually. Oh, yeah. And no, that was like 2000, maybe it was like 2009 or 2010, but we... Yeah, it was like a, we, we went on the internet and looked for a venue in Amsterdam because we were just booking ourselves at the time. Uh, it was me and Matt Simons, and we were like, we found a venue, and it was a really nice restaurant, but it was like right in the middle of the red light district. And we were just like never been here, so we were like, what's this place? It's so scary. But then since then, wandered around. It's a, it's a big city, and uh, yeah, that's funny, though. I don't really... I don't book myself anymore because I don't really know how. <laughs> hey, talking about big, big cities, uh, you're from L.A. originally, then you moved to New York, and I saw you're back in L.A. again. How's that? Yeah, well, my, you know, my family's actually from California, and so I was a baby when we lived there, and then we moved to D.C. when I was young, and then I moved to New York, and so I'm back in L.A., but sort of like for the first time in a way, and uh, I love it. I was in New York a long time, and all my music friends are still there, but L.A. kind of... I was ready to live in California, honestly. <laughs> so. What's better about California? Well, a lot is a lot is challenging, but a lot I love. The weather's great. The work in music is great. Everyone I work with, uh, there's so many great songwriters there. And every day you can write with somebody. And um, a lot of music to be made. And I, I just think there's a lot of outdoors. I like being outdoors. So You've been making music for pretty pretty long, right? Yeah. Longer than even you first recorded. Yeah. Uh, what what make you choose to take the path of a musician like full-time that's a good question i feel like i probably lied to my family when i was young and said music's just a hobby and i think in my head the whole time i was like i will be a musician and i just didn't like know how to do that you know so i think maybe some point in my in high school i started thinking seriously about what it would look like if i got to because i was writing songs always and as soon as i picked up the guitar I finally could accompany myself. Um, so, like, I guess I started saying it out loud maybe when I was 16, but I think when I was, like, five, I thought, I listened to the radio, and I was like, yeah, that, that sounds fun. Probably everyone does that. I when I first started uh, delving into your history and listening to your music, I was, like, typed in your name, and the first thing that popped up was Chris Ayers, if I pronounce it right. Chris Ayer, yeah. Ayer. Perfect. It's a Stanford grad. Oh, yeah. Is that the first thing? It pops up on Wikipedia. Singer, okay, Stanford cool. grad. Yeah, yeah. I went to uh, I went there, um, studied philosophy and music, and uh, <laughs> that was uh, it was. I mean, I loved it there, and a lot of my best friends in the world I met there, and it was really uh, academically it was super hard, but it was I, I loved. I don't know. Just uh, I didn't know I was going to be a musician, you know, in terms of the job, but I, w I knew I was going to write music, so. It was a good place to be for a few years, you know. You're still there every once in a while. I saw a picture of you on Instagram that you were, went to the, the football uh, yeah. football game. Oh, yeah. I go to like, football games when I can, and we go around, uh, the, you know, anything in Southern California. And I see so many people from there all over the place now, you know, so it's great. Hey, you have a new single out on the boulevard. Um, I was hoping, actually, for an album to come out, but first as an EP, right? Yes, I wish there was an album coming out too, but I, uh, I'm working on it and I'm excited about it. This EP, though, has been kind of like the culmination of writing and recording. I took time from touring for the first time sort of ever and focused on writing, focused on making the music I really wanted to make. And On the Boulevard was the first song that came out of that. And there's a collection of material that's sort of following up. So this EP is going to be some of the... I'm really excited about these songs. I'm excited to get them out, finally. Did you play any here, actually? Yeah, I did. The second to last song, Little Bit More, is going to be on it. And uh, I know that a song called Climber is going to be on it. And a brand new song called Bridges and Buildings. These are just names to you right now. A couple of jokes that you made when you played here was like, well, you know, if you fuck up something really good, like completely good, that's also a reason to be proud of yourself. Because like fucking up everything, that's also an accomplishment. I think so, right? Yeah, yeah That's true. At least in some card games, I think. I think. A lot of people do that in their yeah. lifetime. Just like royally screw it up. Yeah. But is it about something that you really experienced? Yeah, it really is. Uh, everything I write about is definitely rooted in some experience. Sometimes it's rooted in multiple experiences, you know, but uh, that one's definitely just learning learning from the mistakes, hopefully. You know, like that's what that song's about. And I think kind of in a way a lot of my songs are about that sort of like, oops, <laughs> let's learn from it, sing about it, feel about it, you know, and 
maybe learn, hopefully. But you write about actual people, right? Yeah, some people, sometimes it's obvious to those people and sometimes it's less obvious. Um, it's not so autobiographical that I get the phone call that's like, how dare you? <laughs> but it's somewhere short of that and still very obviously about the experience, you know what I mean? Hey, uh, Paul Simon, a big influence on this song, I think, on there Boulevard. Um, on more songs, is, is Graceland really, because uh, it's been an album that's not been on Vogue for a long time now. When I was a kid, it was massive. Yeah. And now I hear artists being influenced by it again. And, and you're a great example. That's cool. I mean, I love, I mean, I grew up, it was sort of like when I was young, it was Simon and Garfunkel. And then at some point I got into Paul Simon's early sort of solo records and kind of like in recent years, I got into Graceland and the Rhythm of the Saints and especially Graceland, the way that he incorporates African music and rhythmic stuff. and. Um, it's just songwriter music, but it's also dance music, it's also pop music, and in general I want to be doing that. And I think it comes into everything I write, kind of. He's always been someone I look up to, so. Did it also make you listen to, like, the African music that he listened to when he started writing that stuff? Yeah, no, I think I've always, actually in college I got, I would say, like, a schooling from people who knew what they were talking about in terms of Afrobeat and the tradition of some of the music. I don't, I would be lying if I said I had much of an understanding of it, but listening to what I have gotten, you get a real appreciation for, I think, what sort of polyrhythms and uh, rhythmic emphasis in general that, as an acoustic guitarist, it's an opportunity to go like, what am I, maybe I should do something different, you know, other than strum the same way you always do. So it's, it's definitely fun to be influenced by it. You, you play really easy. I mean, of course, you've been playing everywhere. I mean, you, you probably played, played coffee houses all over the world now, I think. I've done a lot of the coffee house shows, yeah. When I started In America, it's a normal thing, right? Playing a coffee house, it's like more accepted because there aren't like small clubs that you can start off. Totally. I think that's like coming to Europe in the last couple of years, I realized there's not the coffee house thing, but there are a lot of these amazing small clubs. I just did, to start out, I was booking myself in coffee houses all around and I would drive all day and play to like not very many people you know you just show up and play for a few hours and so it was really good that was kind of my education musically more than anything was to like go and play for a few hours and see if you still wanted to be a musician afterwards you know well i mean it's the school of hard knocks right i mean it must be tough to conquer your audience when it's like five people i mean it's probably harder to play in a coffee shop when nobody knows you than to fill for instance the paradiso club or the marquee or whatever yeah i mean it you know mentally it can be i think that's the hardest thing is like is it good enough? Does it matter? Those questions, I think probably everyone has some version of it, but like fighting that and getting past that, I think was the biggest thing for me in that time. Um, yeah. And then you get to play. If people show, then you're like, I get to play songs for people. That's, that's the fun part, you know? Hey, lots of pictures of you in a recording studio uh, on your social media, but it was also a bedroom. Was it your own bedroom or? Oh, yeah. yeah, it was largely my own bedroom. Um, <laughs> for a while, I literally had put up, you know, the like soundproofing, I put it up on my walls in my bedroom and Ruined the walls, by the way. You should not stick that stuff on walls. <laughs> Comes off and the paint was gone. But, you know, just doing whatever way I could. I got the gear and I would have friends over. We'd rent a studio for a day and do drums and then everything else just did in my bedroom. So Jeez. it was fun. <laughs> and, I mean, studios are fun too, so I hope I get to... Well, you know, I mean, you laugh about it, but actually a lot of good records have been recorded by musicians at home or in a small... Small yeah. studio that, or even they rented like on Airbnb a place, uh, got their laptops out, got their garage band out, and recorded good stuff. Definitely. I think more now than ever, it's like the gear has caught up so much. It's just the people. It's like who's engineering and producing, who's playing, how's the singing, and like you can do it almost anywhere, you know? Like you could do it in the middle of the square, theoretically, if you isolate it. I mean, and I just think that's cool. It's fun that it's so much more about the songs now than it is about what money or what, you know, influencer, I don't know, so. When will the EP be released and what's going to be called? We don't have a date yet, but I think it's going to be uh, this summer, uh, definitely by the end of the summer, and I'm not sure about the title yet. We'll see. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm a vinyl freak. I think your music would lend itself fantastically to vinyl, but issuing EPs, you're not going to issue a 10-inch vinyl, right? Um, I'm going to, the plan right now, I just have my old record on vinyl now, and as soon as this becomes the collection of songs that it's on the way to becoming, there will be a vinyl for sure. And I mean, I love, I listen to my favorite records that way, so I'm hoping we get to that point soon. I hope what are your favorite record stations? 
uh, of all time? These are good questions. Uh, just give me a couple of three, man. I yeah, yeah. I mean, I. No, it's great. It's great. I mean, I think right now, Damn the Torpedoes, Tom Petty, uh, and the Heartbreakers is like, in terms of vinyl, especially, you just listen to that on repeat. Um, uh, I actually, growing up and still to this day, uh, the Jackson Brown. I forget the name of the record now, but it's got the Doctor My Eyes, and it's like one of the early Jackson Brown records in that. Every way, songwriting, production, arrangement, vo voice, you know. And then we talked about it, but Graceland's just like, yeah, that's the one. It's like the front of the stack, you know. It's always there. So other stuff that I found uh, musically uh, is uh, maybe this is subconscious. Christmas is a theme in what you post and also in your music. Yeah. I mean, even from uh, from a cat. I don't know if it's your cat called Peanut uh. scratching a record when the. <laughs> which really great, I love that stuff. But also, you you recorded a great version of Old Long Sign. Yeah, I did. I mean, uh, I I did record that song. I think what I love about standards are like you know it's sort of like I don't do jazz at all but I think what I love about standard singing is like you take a song that's a hundred years old and you do your thing with it and I think holiday Christmas anything like that not only is it that traditional thing where you take it and twist it but it's a season where there's all of these emotional memories and for me it's such an it's such inspiration to make music when you feel that way so I think sort of every year it's not really a plan we just I sit with friends and I'm like I want to make a song and then we do a song in a day or two and see what happens kind of so it's so when it's gonna actually this is another thing that just popped up since you play so easy are you actually thinking or did you ever think about recording a live album i've always wanted to get a great recording of a great night and you have so many great songs now i mean if you pick out 12 great songs of all the stuff that you have in a, in a great club it's gonna be killer thank you i i really uh, that's nice to hear, and I honestly, I would like to do that soon. And I think getting the sound right, getting it recorded, it's one of those things I'm hoping I can get ready soon and maybe just, you know, release the next day or something just so it's out there, you know, but that'd be really fun. Can't wait for the EP, can't wait for the live album. Thanks so much for your time, man. Thanks for having me. It's really talking.